Hello, good morning or good afternoon. I'm Tom in the product team at Veronix. And I wrote a blog about the top five problems with endpoint management. So thank you very much for reading that blog. And in this session, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit more about how we at Foronix can help you with each of those five problems. So if you're an IT manager responsible for your organization's endpoints, there's gonna be something here that will make your life easier. So I work in the product team for Foronix and it's great to be with you today. If you have any questions as I go through the session, please just pop them in the Zoom chat and we can pause for questions at the end of the session, which will only take about 15 minutes of your time. So just to explain a little bit about Foronix, we've been around for 25 years. In that time, we've sold over 10 million licenses all around the world in 150 countries. And we have over 30,000 customers around the world of all shapes and sizes. Our headquarters are in Vancouver in Canada, as well as offices in the UK where I'm based and USA and also in Singapore. So that's where most of the product development happens. But we have partners all over the world who work with us to provide fantastic service. So wherever you happen to be in the world, there's going to be someone near to you who can look after you. And if you would like us to put you in touch with your local representative, please just let me know in the Q&A and we'll be happy to tell you who that is. So I'm going to show you a product called Foronix Cloud Deep Freeze, which can solve each of the five top problems for people managing endpoints. So the first problem is security. This is always your top priority. You're trying to keep your devices safe, free from viruses. You're trying to keep ransomware away. But that is something you just don't have to worry about anymore with Foronix Cloud Deep Freeze. So looking at the policy page, one of the options here is anti-executable. So you can just turn this module on and you can block executable files from being run in your environment. You've got complete control over the list so you can see what kinds of executable files are being run before you enforce protection and then it's easy to add and remove from the list. Within this module, we've also got ransomware prevention. So ransomware is something that unfortunately has seen a big increase uh, since the advent of COVID-19. Um, ransomware is becoming ever more lucrative, so criminals are dedicating ever more of their resources towards it. Um, but you, all you have to do is tick this box, enable ransomware prevention. And then we've got a long list of known ransomware file extensions, and those are just going to be blocked. And we keep this list up to date all the time as, as more ransomware becomes known. We've also got an antivirus module. So you can just turn this on, and then all your workstations are going to be have active protection enabled and firewall protection enabled. And you've got all kinds of options around how you set the antivirus up to work for you. So if you have um, a, a nasty threat that makes it through the anti-executable and makes it through antivirus, extremely unlikely. But if it did, we arrive at the a third layer of protection, which is deep freeze. Deep freeze is a reboot to restore solution. So it, it means that when you restart a workstation, it will always restart in its original state. So any security threat will disappear. So that applies when a user is locally restarting a workstation, or you can do it from the cloud. So this is your cloud console. Here are your workstations. So you could just select these two and freeze them or 
restart or carry out all kinds of other on-demand tasks. But the essential message is that deep freeze is an absolutely indestructible layer of security. We have, as I said earlier, thousands of 30,000 customers around the world, and they just do not worry about security. So if security is something you're worrying about, you, you just don't need to. Okay, so the second problem is Windows patches and software updates. So it's often going to be quite tough to keep on top of all your Windows updates and all your software updates, especially if you've got a large state, you've got a large number of computers, it becomes a real drag to manage everything properly. So I'm just looking at the Windows update dashboard here. I can see the Windows update status across all my computers. And again, I can see all my computers here and I can just immediately install missing patches or initiate a patch scan and everything's clickable and drillable so I can get right down into the detail of what's happening across my state when it comes to Windows updates. So you can do everything on demand from the dashboard, but you can also schedule all your Windows updates to deliver while, while you're asleep or while, while your computers are not in production. And the same applies to software updates. So for the software update module in my policy, here is a list of 106 really common applications. Um, and it's just a case of selecting the ones I want to keep updated in my environment. So if I select these applications and schedule a maintenance period, and I'd say maybe between uh, midnight and 1 a.m. on a Saturday, all my software is going to be kept up to date. I can add my own software if um, if I have applications that don't appear on that list. But the key message is that it's something that can take up a lot of your time as an IT manager, but it just doesn't need to take up any time at all. You just set your software, set it to update, and then everything's going to be kept up to date. So the third problem that IT managers face when they're managing their endpoints is inventory management. management. <clears throat> so I'm looking at the inventory page here, um, which shows me where all my hardware is. So this might be tricky if I'm managing a lot of computers and I might have a lot of colleagues working at home and it might be quite hard to keep track of where everything is. And I might have imposed a structure, maybe using a spreadsheet or some other method of um, trying to keep on top of it all, but maybe it's just become so difficult that I've just given up. Um, so, so here is, this is where I can just see everything relating to all my hardware. Um, so I can see all my computers and the columns that are particularly relevant to me I'm displaying, but there are many other columns that I can choose. So for example, if I wanted to see the public IP address, I'd drag that into here and then that's going to appear as one of my columns. So I can see where my workstations are. I can see the warranty end date, which is a particularly useful thing to, I know when that date is approaching that I need it to make sure that I'm, I'm getting everything done under warranty that, that I can. Um, and it's just a, a one-stop shop. Here, here's my one page, my inventory page. Okay, this is where everything is and this is the status of it. Um, and it, it can be like a uh, starting point for a health check. So I can see I've got there some system drive usage. I've got 77% and 100% there. So there's a red flag. I need to go and have a look at that and attend to that. The fourth problem also relates to hardware is um, hardware degradation. So all this hardware is going to be expensive um, and you might find it's not performing as well as you'd like. It's slowing down, getting bloated up with a load of junk. Um, but deep freeze will solve that problem for you as well, because as I, as I explained, it's a reboot to restore solution. So every session starts with it in its original pristine state. So you're not clogging up your workstations. 
So as well as the massive security benefit, you're also just making sure that the performance of your hardware is optimized and you're just really slowing down the, the process of hardware degradation and you're getting maximum value out of your IT estate. Fifth problem is scale. You might think that it's a losing battle to keep on top of everything. So when you're trying to manage your estate, you're trying to make strong decisions based on the best information, you might need to amalgamate that information from a lot of different sources, but no longer. Um, whatever you need to find out, you can find it out. So for example, here is my software asset report. And here I can see which versions of which software I'm running, how many licenses I've paid for and how many licenses I'm, I'm using. So I'm going to make sure here that I'm not paying for any software that I don't actually use. I'm not wasting any money. Um, <clears throat> we've got all kinds of other reports uh, which will benefit you and give you the best information. So here's a computer usage report. So I can see uh, which computers are being used and when. Uh, I've got a login summary report so I can see who's logging in for how long and when. And all kinds of other reports. So. The essential message here is that whatever you need to know, you can find it out and it's at the tips of your fingers. You don't need to be scratching around, trying to get information from lots of different places. Whatever you need to know, you can find it out easily. So that's why we talk about one platform total control because we give you total control of what is going on in your environment. It's just, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just one easy to use web-based web -based console. So the URL's the same, you can manage your workstations wherever you are, wherever they are. Everything's in one place. And wherever your office, if you're in the office, away from the office, wherever your devices are, you can just manage everything seamlessly. I just talked about a few of the ways in which we help you. So there's quite a lot of other features that will save you time. So for example, um, OS image deployment, that's no longer a hassle. And remote connect is included in ultimate licenses. So that will allow you to establish a remote session with any of your workstations. There's lots of other things you can do with Phoenix Cloud Deep Freeze. So please let us know if there's anything else you see here that interests you. And we'll be happy to schedule a separate call to, to show you. We offer a free trial that you can sign up to from our website. When you sign up for the trial, you just need to create a policy and then activate the functionality you need in your policy and then install the cloud agent on the devices you want to manage, and then you're ready to go, simple as that. So just drawing to a close and, and to summarize today's session, whatever your biggest problems are with endpoint management, whatever's causing you the most hassle, we can solve the problem for you. I'm leaving our contact details on screen now, Thank you for your questions in the Q&A. And if you have any more questions, uh, please just put them in the Q&A now. So I see we've got one question. Um, can you create sites? Yep, you can create as many sites as you need and we'd recommend that as one of the first steps um, if, you're, if you're operating in a multi-site environment. So it's just a case of going up here. Here are all my sites and I'd create a new cloud site. And then, um, you can assign the right administrators to the right site. So you can say, for example, that um, a local admin can um, manage software updates in London or, and then won't be able to see any of the other sites. Uh, so, so it allows you the control for, uh, for the multi-site environments. Uh, just gonna, I've got another question. If I have an antivirus solution, <clears throat> Will it work with deep freeze? Uh, yeah, so that would be, um, you'd use the data igloo 
module. So data reglue is where you would exclude local files from, um, from deep freeze. So if you imagine uh, deep freeze as a reboot to restore solution. So um, when a workstation restarts, then local changes will disappear. And that would include antivirus definitions, unless you either put them in data reglue here um, or use our own antivirus solution. Uh, so I'll just hold on. Thank you for that question. I'll just hold on one minute in case we have another question. Um, okay, so thank you very much for your time, everyone. Um, and if you have any more questions from today that you think of afterwards, please just drop us a line. Um, but otherwise, thanks very much and have a nice day.